<laughs> what makes my soul smile? Well, I don't know if anything outside of itself necessarily is required to make it smile. It smiles from inside its own self, you know. So it's not like uh, something outside is required to um, to say trigger it. So it's smiling. I think it is, you can say it is smiling all the time. You know, it is smiling all the time. It doesn't necessarily have to show itself on the face that it's smiling, but it is smiling all the time, meaning that it is a natural state of joy within one's own being. And I feel that this is the natural state of all beings. Inwardly, if they are not troubled by their minds, if they don't give the mind their daily life or personal sense of identity uh, so much attention, they will find they will be they are they are happy inside themselves. They are. Uh, if you want to use the word smiling, is I think it's a beautiful word. It's smiles. smiling inside yourself, just happens like that. Mm. And I wouldn't want to force it because it doesn't happen like that. That you just have this one kind of constant remark to be making. But I would encourage also and the people to look towards that because it's not really that it is so far away from themselves. In fact, this is just imagination. In, in fact, like that. But if it was not appropriate to say that, you know, I don't know. Um, Everything depends upon a kind of openness. You know, some people are at a crossroads in their life, and uh, it's a defining moment for them. At this, I would want to say also, mm, don't take things too personally if you can hear that. You see, because always wherever there's the kind of person, too much thinking of yourself like a person, then right there always some trouble come. Because I don't feel we are need to take life so personally. I think that's the mistake we make. And due to an ill-conceived idea of who we are, then we we do take the life to almost like a threat. And it comes about because the people then feel that life is really so um, unfair. It can feel like that to them, or it is so demanding. And uh, we don't know how we can respond uh, from a place of truth, and uh, and really be happy. It's almost like some circumstances, situations come, and we are not able to be happy in them. I say that's not necessarily true. And anyway, about happiness, I don't mean the happiness which is the superficial happiness, not pretending to be happy. So there's a happiness that is so broad. That on the surface it can look like you're deep in thought or something like that, but underlying that, there can be a beautiful space, which I call joy or uh, peace, a loving state. At the same time, uh, we sometimes feel like we cannot have these two states. Either you're unhappy or you're happy. I said it's not like that. The natural state is to be joy, joyful. Not necessarily joyful about any particular thing, but just the joy of being. That is our natural state. So, uh, I feel that again, coming back to the point I made, very often I think people put too much energy perceiving life personally, and then also prob- problematically, that something you know something is a problem, and you know why did this happened to me, and get caught up too much into that type of traffic. So if I could, and if there was openness, I, I may find myself saying, "Listen, don't take it so seriously. You know, it's also passing. Everything, everything is passing." That would be probably um, one of the things I would say, or don't identify so strongly with anything because it's just life; it's just moving on. You know, that again is not easy though, because again, when we take things personally. We become very, very serious, and then if someone says to you, "Listen, relax a little bit, and you know, pull back and learn to observe a bit more what's going on, rather than to be so quick to identify," 
then some people will hear that and make use of it and see actually the beauty in that, to take some space, meaning to become a bit more detached, and that sometimes things are not really as bad as they initially appear to be. So, um, if you are able to observe, you may come to see that uh, some reactions may happen, but you don't identify with those deeply as well, and then a clearer space comes like that. Mm. I, I feel that there is a place for grief. If someone is grieving, I feel that there is totally a space for grief also. I may not want to go and to intrude and even somehow to say something to try and get people out of grief. I think grief is a very credible uh, experience and feeling also. So that if somebody is grieving, I think there is a room. I mean, I don't feel that there is a. We have to be happy all the time in the in that sense that you know, if somebody is looking sad, there is not space for that. I think there is tremendous space for that, because sometimes out of this experiencing sadness can be someone's opportunity to face some things in themselves that they have not so far been looking at. So there has to be space for that. So I would only really want to, I don't know if the word is to console someone, if I felt that somehow they were slipping away from a, from a, from a place which I would have to intuit within my own heart, that they are slipping off and they really do need you know, some uh, contact, that can actually help to bring them back a little bit to, to a state of some balance, because it doesn't do good to anybody just to be drifting off into a deep sorrow and getting lost in that and so on. That's not good. No. I would like to feel that uh, there are some beings who uh, fully understand in the heart what is being pointed, and come alive in that understanding and continue to share from their place of seeing, and from that beautiful discovery with other beings, because I feel that that is a, an authentic sharing uh, in the human kingdom. You know, mm -hmm. Being free from the, the hypnosis of conditioning is the biggest smile you are going to feel in your life. Because as long as we are holding on to ideas about who we are, which are not true, then you cannot really smile with your heart. I mean, you may have a laugh, you may have a joke or something like this, but I don't think that you are asking that question, just like a momentary smile. Because even the most miserable person in the world must have a smile now and again. But I think you are asking, I am responding to your question like something very profound, but really brings a smile that comes, that begins in the heart and shines, you know, just as, you know, unquestionable joy from your heart. I would have to say that it is someone who has found themselves, someone who realised the truth of what we are, rather than what we have been conditioned to believe we are. And this is totally, totally possible. In my line of expression, you may say, it is only for that, because we see the outcome of not recognising that, that we do so many crazy things, in this world, and, and hurt ourselves and other beings. So for someone to realise, to recognise, again, their true nature, that is... You are smiling, you're smiling in, in every being. It is very infectious to find somebody who is happy like that, who is happy, but it is not about a joke. You understand? Who is just happy. Because why? You say, why are you happy? I don't know. I can't even say why I'm happy. That is the best kind of happy, when you cannot even say why you're happy. If you can say why you're happy, then your happiness is going to finish soon. But when you don't know why you're happy, you just can't help being happy. You even try to be sad, you can't succeed, because your light is so on. That is the happiness for me. And that happiness, I love to see in human beings. Not just human. I like to see a dog happy. As you happy, happy dog. Huh? A dog smile also if he's happy. You know, I even see birds happy. I see them happy. I see how they behave. I don't know what they're happy about, but they are happy somehow because for me, I cannot explain any other thing than to say because they are life. Uh, I am life. I am not even living life. I am life. We are. We are life. And in that joy, 
you just, I don't want to tell people, be happy. I said, I don't want to trouble you to tell you be happy. I just want to tell you, you're love. You're okay. You know, I say, I don't want to remind the world that it is suffering and that it is unhappy. I want to remind the world that it is beautiful and free. Because people forget this. That life, we're not here just to struggle, you know, or to party. I'm not here to party. I'm not interested in I've done enough partying. It's not party, but I don't even I don't even want to say I'm here to celebrate life even. I, I'm just here and it's enough. My here is enough that I'm I'm happy inside my heart. And everything that's inside, every cell in my body is dancing to 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 see that joy in other beings. You see? So I don't know another I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go with that joy. I don't know where I can be without that joy. And so something inside I don't know what compels me or compels this body to um, to try and somehow remind because I cannot create it. I can only remind you that that joy is inside you. And uh, sometimes we have to work a bit at it. Sometimes you have to remind someone, listen, let go of this. Sometimes I'll even push you even, you see. You say, what are you doing? You're crazy. Leave this alone. You know, you're just messing yourself up. Just to allow your light to to to, to shine again. So I don't see any other thing. Because pleasure you can find, but happiness seems rare. And yet I say that our our being is happy by nature. I know it. I'm not even it's not my belief. I don't believe these things. I know it. I am it. And if I am it, I'm no more special than any other human being. Then you must be it. And that's not a supposition, that is that is an affirmation that you you are that. But I know that it's not enough just to say these things, you know. Um, your life has to be the evidence of what you say is true. I'm not going about trying to be happy. I don't have to try to be happy. I'm I fail miserable at being unhappy. I can't be unhappy. You understand? That's the one thing I can say I fail. I, I don't even fail because I don't even try. Why would I don't try to be unhappy? But it's just there, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's like that. It is like that. So in summarizing it, I would just say just to be to discover oneself, you know, because if you don't, then whatever happiness we find in this world is momentary. But when you are again, I would say that when your mind and your heart connect, then the lights go on. I think this is the light you're talking about. And uh, if you see, Sometimes we see it in the face of children or something, but it's only a spark. Even they cannot keep it. It comes really with really coming home. I would put it like that. And I don't want to feel that that is too much to put in front of a human being, because then I will be insulting human beings. So does it take a bit of work? Yeah, in the beginning it takes a bit of work, not because it itself is work. It itself is not work, but because we have put too much attention on the wrong things. You see, then it takes a bit of work to kind of just to turn the attention back a little bit. But as soon as we begin to discover again our original joy, we don't need any encouragement. It's, that's enough encouragement already. You know you're onto a winner somehow. And you just want to be there. It's like life pulls you, like it embraces you and pulls you inside. But if you don't know of it before, like one time I was not aware of that. 
So my life was momentary joys, momentary pleasures, momentary sadnesses and whatever. But this I received what I call like a kiss from within myself. And that just completely devastated me in the most beautiful way. You understand? I mean I I couldn't carry on my life how I was before. It just started to change. And it's the best change it it's still changing. Even on the surface it's still changing. But something inside is not changing. And there's that duality in life. Something is changing and something is not changing. And I've found that which is not changing. And then what is changeful, I can enjoy now. Before I was a bit more afraid of what is changing. Now I'm not afraid of what is changing. Because you find what is not changing. You see. And that's a smile that is not made just with your lips, not with your mouth, it's made with your whole being. Enjoys that smile. And uh, satsang is one of the very few and authentic environments for me. I know in one way you say you're sitting in front of a lot of people now what's what is so authentic about Well, yeah, it looks a bit formal. If we could have it another way, it would be another way. But the fact is that that is what we do. We are looking into the subject of who we are on a firm recognition that the discovery is worth it. You see? And so there is a joy in that. When we are looking, because we have mostly seemed to have forgotten that, sometimes fears comes up because people think, Oh my God, you know, because we have invested so much to become something we are not. That when it's time to to return to what we are, we are afraid of giving up the something we're not. But that's life also. A bit of pain has to be there. But only so much that is necessary to return you to the to your painless truth. So that would be my take on that one. Mm. I want to say, if I say something, that whatever happens, everything is okay. Whatever happens, the final word is everything is okay. Inside the heart, something takes care of you. Whatever it is that happened, I know that uh, even if it comes to losing people close to you, I've lost my son, I've lost my sisters, my brother, and so on, and and friends who grow up, but you reach my age, you start to find a lot more people around you who have been passing away and so on, and you people you have you have shared very closely with them, you feel the pain of that. And also sometimes uh, with things going on inside this body you go to a doctor and you know, any moment you know you can they can be telling you like you got this prostate cancer or something. Your 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 life gets ready for that. And uh, and then you begin to see that it's all momentary. All of this, we put so much energy, but you cannot keep it, because even the body that you need to enjoy, you cannot keep. And it's a time when you reach uh, a certain level of seeing inside yourself that everything is passing by, and you grow up very quickly. You know, you grow up very very quickly. To the point where you know, like I said in satsang, that I am. I don't have a future. Therefore, I am supremely happy. I am not concerned at all. Like my happiness is next week or something is happening. I am just here now. And there is a fullness, a richness about that, because I know the reality that tomorrow may not come. In terms of, you know, we live in a lot of. Projections that you know people say, oh, you know, next year I'm going to do this, and for me that's a wow, really, I don't know what that is. I only know next year doesn't exist for me. Last year doesn't exist for me. Yesterday also. I have to try to catch my memory about what yesterday was. It doesn't have any real um, life in itself. I found something which has no yesterdays and no tomorrow about it. It doesn't even have a today about it. That has been the most beautiful discovery. 
but I can't discuss that. I can, but it's not really worth it. But there come a time when there are people who just understand that. They just, I don't know, they have a way of just understanding these things, and they say, hey, I'm on board with that, I'm, I'm here with you. Mm. But it would be like that. Whatever happened, whatever happened, if you especially, if you can just pay attention that everything comes and goes, everything comes and goes, everything comes and goes, even this body is going to come and go. But something will witness also this body coming and going. Mm. And I say that you are okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Namaste. Thank you so much.